This book is called The Easter Bunny and it's all about a magical rabbit, a bit like this one. This is Bunty, she's an Angora rabbit and she loves it when I sit and read stories. So she's going to just sit here quietly while we read The Easter Bunny. The Easter Bunny. And as you can see, Beryl likes reading stories too. Ruby and the Easter Bunny. Late one lovely sunny afternoon, Ruby was playing in the living room with Skinny Monkey and some of the other toys. She sat Skinny Monkey on the windowsill and just as she turned to pick up another toy, she thought she saw something moving among the flowers outside the window. Look, there's the flowers there. Can you see? She stared hard at the flower bed where some beautiful bright yellow daffodils were nodding to and fro in a gentle breeze. Ruby loves daffodils. They remind her of little sunshines on sticks. They do look a bit like that. Look, can you see? They look a bit like sunshines on sticks. She thought she could see a little brown foot and a little black nose. Ruby squinted her eyes and really concentrated on the little black nose. But as she star stared at it, she saw it twitched and then it disappeared in a flash. She was very excited. She was absolutely sure that she knew what was hiding in the daffodils in the garden. Can you see what might be hiding there? Hmm. Gathering up Skinny Monkey, Ruby ran to ask Mummy if she could go and play in the garden. Mummy said that because it was a nice, warm, sunny day, it would be okay to play in the garden. But not too long though, because it was getting late. Ruby crept quietly across the lawn and over to the flower bed. First, she gently parted the daffodils where she had seen the little black nose appear, but there was nothing there. Then she got down on her knees and peeped among the flower stems. And then she saw it, the same little black twitching nose, only just visible in the shadows. As she looked more closely, she saw the little black nose was attached to a velvety brown face with long whiskers. What do you think it is? While she was watching, the little creature moved. Then she could see its little paws and its fluffy white tail. Now, there it is in the flower bed. And there it is now. Can you see? Can you see? Come and see, look. Come and see. Yeah, can you see? Mm. Sit down now. Be good. Once Ruby could reach the rabbit, she gently pushed one hand underneath it and lifted it up onto her lap. She sat on the lawn stroking it and chatting quietly. While she was stroking it, she realised there was something wrong with its paw. She looked closer and saw there was a nail stuck in its paw. Ouch! When she touched the paw, the poor little rabbit flinched and a big fat tear rolled down its velvety cheek. Oh, look. Hmm? Poor little rabbit. Poor little Ruby. Very carefully, Ruby stood up and carried the baby rabbit and skinny monkey back into the house. Ruby showed the poor bunny to Mummy. Mummy was very worried about it and decided to take the poorly bunny to the vets. On the way to the vets, Ruby sat in the back of the car, cuddling the rabbit and talking gently to make it feel safe. At the vet hospital, a very kind vet gently wiped the sore paw and put some cream on it to make it a bit numb. Then a nurse came and gently took the nail out and bandaged the little rabbit's paw, sore paw foot. The nurse told Ruby that her new friend was a little girl bunny. The rabbit was very happy and snuggled into Ruby's neck all the way home. That night, Ruby kept the bunny in a warm box filled with straw next to her bed. She put some carrots and a bowl of water in it as well. Then 
Ruby and Skinny Monkey snuggled down and dropped off to sleep. Look. Oh. During the night, Ruby was woken up by a noise. She peeked out from under her quilt and saw a bright, shiny circle. Look, can you see? Can you see? In the corner of her bedroom. Then, to her surprise, a magnificent gentleman rabbit stepped out of the circle and came walking over to her bed. He was wearing a beautiful purple jacket with three big egg-shaped golden buttons on it. On his feet, he was wearing shiny green shoes with golden buckles that were also shaped like eggs. Tied at his neck was a shiny yellow silk scarf, which was tucked into his jacket. He was carrying a small wicker basket in one hand and an elegant walking stick in the other. Look at him. He looks fantastic, doesn't he? Can you see? The shining circle disappeared, but because the smart looking rabbit shone like a bright full moon, it was still quite light in Ruby's room. He smiled at Ruby, and then to Ruby's complete amazement, he spoke. Hello Ruby, I am the Easter Bunny, and I have come to thank you for being so kind and looking after Blossom. He told her how all his children help him to deliver the eggs at Easter time and how Ruby's new friend had been hiding in the garden, getting ready to deliver eggs when all of a sudden she had trodden on a nail that someone had carelessly thrown away. Then Blossom had tripped over, dropping her basket and stick, banged her head and forgotten that why she was even there. She even forgotten all the Easter magic that could have helped to get home to Easter Island. And because of this, she turned back into an ordinary, fluffy little brown rabbit. Then he told her that all of his bunny helpers carry a magical never-ending basket for the eggs they deliver and a walking stick to help them get round. The Easter Bunny walked over to the box and touched the little brown bunny with his stick. In a flash, the tiny creature grew into a beautiful young rabbit. She looked a bit big standing with her feet tucked into a small cardboard box. Ruby and Skinny Monkey gasped in amazement. There was no doubt about it. Her little rescued rabbit friend was actually one of the Easter Bunny's daughters because right there on her paw was the bandage and in her eye was the same soft friendly look. Can you see? Look, there she is standing in the box. Blossom was amazed when Ruby told her she had ended up in in the bedroom, standing with her feet squashed up into a little cardboard box. Blossom Bunny reached down and gave Ruby a great big cuddle. Then the Easter Bunny asked Ruby if, he, if she would like a visit to Easter Island, where all the magical rabbits lived. I'd like that. Would you? Ruby was very excited, squeezing Skinny Monkey tight to her. She agreed right away. Without further ado, the Easter Bunny tapped his stick on the floor, the bright yellow shining circle reappeared, and they all stepped through into a beautiful green meadow. Look. Ruby looked round and was amazed to see rabbits everywhere, coming and going through the same shiny circles. They popped up and disappeared just as soon as the rabbit stepped through or came back onto the meadow on Easter Island. The Easter Bunny asked Blossom if she would like to take Ruby on a tour. Then, taking Ruby's hand and thanking her once more for her kindness and help, he gave it a grateful squeeze. Then, quick as a wink, he disappeared once more to get on with delivering the Easter eggs. What a lovely time Ruby had. She was shown around all the workshops and even joined in the egg decorating. She painted a picture of a of Skinny Monkey on her egg. Look, there it is, look. There's a picture of Skinny Monkey on an Easter egg. Then she visited the chocolate fountain where the chocolate eggs were made and tasted a cup of the most mouth-watering chocolate ever. Look. Before she knew it, it was time to go home. 
Blossom Bunny held her hand just as another magic circle opened, then helped her through. Back in the bedroom, Blossom tucked Ruby up safe and warm in her bed. Then with a good night kiss and a squeeze, the rabbit was gone. As the sun shone through Ruby's curtains on a lovely Easter Sunday morning, she jumped out of bed and looked in the box but it was empty, except for a little Easter egg with Skinny Monkey's face on it. Grabbing Skinny Monkey, she rushed down the stairs to tell Mummy and Daddy all about her night on Easter Island with her magical friend. As she gabbled the story out to Mummy and Daddy, they just stared at her. She knew that they didn't believe her, so she raced up the stairs and came back a minute later with the egg and a box to prove it. Both Mummy and Daddy said that the little bunny must have got out in the night and some managed, somehow managed to escape back into the garden and maybe her adventure had been a dream. Ruby was quite sad to think that her bunny had gone but later on when she was playing in the garden she found a beautiful little basket and a dainty walking stick hidden among the daffodils. Then Ruby knew she hadn't been dreaming at all. Look, tiny little walking stick in a tiny basket. 